Tony, I saw you. Go on, open up the trunk on your car, and let me see what you're stashing away. Uh-oh, you caught me red-handed, Tech. Holy cow, it's Joe. Hi, Tech. <laughs> What's all the excitement? Oh, I was just kidding, Tony. I can see you're getting set for a water test. What you been doing to the deck lid? Uh, just this, Tech. Joe showed me how to raise the drain trough under this weather strip to make a better seal. You want to crawl in and help him make sure I did a good job? If you insist, my boy. Uh-uh, no sorry, Tech. I'll watch for leaks. You stay outside and watch Tony. And make sure the big squirt lets me out when I holler. You guys sure trust me. Now, Tech, Joe said to start on this side at the bottom and go up slowly, inch by inch. That's smart, Tony. Flooding a car with water only gets confusing. Section by section is the way to water test. How's this side? Okay, Tony. Uh, now try the other side, and then the top edge of the deck lid. Next, run some water over the rear belt molding, and then the tail lights to check for possible leaks at those points. You know, Tech, I wish Joe would give me the whole story on body sealing. All you have to do is to ask, my boy. I'll put the bee on Joe as soon as you let him out of there. Okay, Tech. Uh, how's she look, Joe? She's tighter than a drum, Tony. You did a good job. How about giving Tony the whole story on water testing and body seals, Joe? A lot of mechanics I know are interested in water and dust conditions. All right, Tech. In this case, Tony said that his trunk leaked a little. Some water was getting past the weather strip. We found a low spot by checking the seal with a shipping tag. So we tapped under the drain trough with a rubber mallet to bring the weather strip up where it belonged. While we were at it, I figured we might as well check the other luggage compartment openings, like the hardware holes fender mounting bolt holes and tail light mounting holes. So you went to a water test. Of course we went to a water test. That's the only sure way to track down a leak. Well, while you're at it, Tony ought to know where these bodies are sealed, how they can be checked, and how they can be corrected. Yeah, that's right, Tech. First of all, Tony, remember to water test from the bottom up, section by section. As soon as you spot a leak, correct it before going further. Why don't you play water above the top edge of the deck lid first, Joe? On account of the rear belt molding, Tony. If you run water over it first, it's easy to confuse any water that might get through there with deck lid leaks. You won't find a case like that often, but you ought to keep it in mind. You see, if water got through the molding attaching holes, it would run along or over the inside flange and into the trunk. Might go through the seam, too, if the seal wasn't up to snuff. I didn't see any leaks at the deck lid, so then I asked for water on the rear belt molding at the back, just to check it. Oh, I get it, Joe. But how about the floor pan? Like those joints around the gas tank support, the wheelhouse brace, and the seams where the quarter panels join the floor pan. You can seal them with any good commercial caulking compound, Tony. If any floor pan seams are open, they'll probably let in dust more than water. Some mechanics use a flashlight or extension light to locate openings where dust could get in. Uh, sounds like a good idea, Tech. By the way, Joe, what did you do for that customer that was telling me about water wetting the rear floor mat in his car? Well, I wasn't sure I knew where the water came from myself. So I took out the back seat and carpet. And then I water tested the lower half of each back door from the bottom up to the belt, and each was okay. So then I Wait went Wait a minute, Joe. What if you had found a leak at the rear edge of the door? Why, if you got a leak at the section of the door called the dog leg, seal it temporarily with dum-dum. Close the door and play water at that point. No water goes through, you'll know that's where it was leaking. So, remove the dum-dum and build up that spot with solder. I see, Joe. Here's something else, Tony. Never use water under pressure when water testing. Pressure can force water past any weather strip seal, no matter how perfect it is. Yeah, Tony. Hey, take it easy. Just play the water on the section pretty much like water travels when it rains. I get you, Tech. No pressure. Swell, Tony. Now, after water testing the doors and finding them okay, I checked the rear belt molding on each side. 
And that's because clip hole or seam leaks under the belt at the sides can let water run down the inside of the body, under the seat, and onto the carpet. Right, Joe. What else did you check? And then I checked the drip molding from the belt molding up to the top of the door. Leaks anywhere along there can also wet the carpet. But you still couldn't find a leak, huh? No. But then I remembered the coach joints on each side of the center pillar and the joint at the top of the pillar just below the drip molding. You see, if water gets through at the coach joints, it'll follow around underneath the garnish molding and wet the door trim below. Now, water getting in at the top of the pillar can run down inside the pillar and come under the floor mat in back, and that's what I found in your customer's car, Tony. So, all I had to do was seal the joint with body seam sealer. How about this little molding strip on the pillar? That's another possibility, Tony. Just pry it loose with a putty knife to see if the sponge rubbers are in place in the clips. Okay, Joe. Well, what about dust leaks? Well, anywhere that water gets in, dust will, too. Sometimes dust gets in where the channel reinforcement from the floor pan meets the wheelhouse, just in front of the rear wheel. Now, let me tell you about another job. I had a customer once who said the door trim on his car was getting wet. So I water tested around the whole door and at the drip molding above. What happened? That's just it. Nothing happened. Then I let a lot of water run down the glass, and bingo, I found it. Water was getting past the cat's whiskers in the outer seal and coming out between the trim and door. I checked and found that the door drain holes were open, so I knew I had to cut down the amount of water getting past the seal. First, I took off the trim and removed the door glass. Then I built a bead of rubber across the bottom of the door glass and put the glass back in. That bead formed a seal under the cat's whiskers when the glass was run all the way up. Nice going, Joe. And incidentally, while you have the trim off, just look down through the door to make sure both ends of the cat's whiskers contact the side channels. If you see daylight through there, push a little sealer into the openings at each end of the cat's whiskers. Then water test the job. How do you test it? I bet you use the bottle test. Sure. You just pour about a pint of water down the glass. I did that. And almost all of it ran down the outside. Just a very little got past the seal and into the door. Then I suppose you taped over the access openings in the inner panel, didn't you, Joe? Yeah. I used a cloth-type adhesive tape. But first, I drilled a quarter-inch hole in the angle at the bottom edge of each opening. That was to keep water from damming up behind the tape. Then I replaced the waterproof paper, because it was slightly damaged, and I taped it good at the bottom. Next, I reinstalled the trim. Another thing, Tony, always check how the door weather strip seals. If necessary, you can move the hinges and striker in to make a tighter seal. And if you ever have to install a weather strip, you'll find out how to do it in this reference book. Okay. What now? And now, let's turn this record over. Then we can talk about how to handle other leaks our customers might report. You know, Joe... I'm beginning to see that the biggest part of body sealing is knowing how to water test. And it's a good idea to keep in mind where the body's sealed so you'll know where to look for leaks. Joe's right, Tony. And how to seal is also spelled out pretty well in this reference book. In addition, there's a swell section on the kinds of sealers available and how and where to use them for best results. Okay, Jack. I'll look it over. Now, let's see. We've already covered the door pretty well, except for the vent wing assemblies, Tony. Well, what's so special about them? Well, for one thing, you aim the hose at the top of the door so the water will run right over the vent wing. And be sure to run water over the corners and along the division bar, Tony. And again, no pressure. Oh, now look. You guys sold me on that. But I can't see why you have to be fussy about vent wings. Some guys I know will even drive in a rainstorm with the vents open to get air. That's true, my boy. But if you do find a vent wing that leaks, you better know how to handle it. Tech's right, Tony. If the vent wings leak, water will run over the garnish moldings. The front vents have an adjustable top pivot to get a better seal along the edge of the glass. And there's a drain hole in the rubber molding. Incidentally, fellas... There have been a few improvements in that rubber molding around the vent glass. Yeah, I've noticed the front vent, for instance, has two drain holes now. The new hole is in the bottom rear corner. And on the rear vent, there's a drain hole added in the front corner. And the new seals extend all the way across to the division bar. You know, you can make these new holes in the earlier jobs if you want to. 
And you can build the rubber seal out to the division bar. It's all in the reference book. That sounds like a good deal, Tech. And here's another, Tony. You can twist the division bar slightly so it'll fit flush against the glass. On the earlier models, you can spring the front vent wing a little to get a better seal. Joe, why don't you show Tony how to shim the division bar between the metal and felt to get a better seal against the glass? Sure, Tech. All you do, Tony, is fold a piece of tape over a soaked piece of shim stock. Force the tape between the division bar and channel, then slide out the shim, leaving the tape in place. What would you do if a customer claims water's getting through and wet in the headlining? If that ever does happen, Tony, you'll have to seal the drip molding seam. And remember, if water leaked through the back part of the drip molding, it would go under the rear seat and floor mat. If it leaked at the front, it would collect around the inside cowl area and wet the front floor mat. This could be confused with a leak at the windshield. That's a good point, Joe. You see, if a customer tells you his windshield's leaking, remember, there are other places to look besides the windshield. I generally check the seal at the windshield wiper pivots. Water leaking through here is often confused with leakage of the cowl ventilator lid. If it is the pivot, I remove the pivot cover and put rubber cement on both sides of the gasket. You can also use thread sealer on the pivot threads. The cowl ventilator lid can be made to fit evenly on its rubber seal by adjusting the hinge screws. You can reach these screws through the slots in the screen. The linkage is adjustable to get a tight seal. But on some of the earlier models, you might have to use a file to lengthen the slot in the link arm for extra adjustment. Incidentally, if the trough is crimped, it might not drain right, or you might have to reseal the weather strip. And make sure that all openings for wires, heater connections, and controls are properly sealed against water and dust. Right, Joe. And Tony, it's a good idea to seal around the cage nuts for the front door hinge pocket screws. Another point you can check is around the front fender attaching studs. You know the place. They come through small clearance holes in the cowl. For sure, Joe. Right behind the kick pad. Had a boy, Tony. And see to it that the drive nails of the hood lacing are sealed. Also, any small holes under the lacing. That's right. And over at the side, there's a weld at the bottom of the windshield post and a seam across the cowl at the hood hinge brackets. You might want to check those points, too. Okay, Joe, I'll check them all. Does that take care of the body? Uh-uh. Well, we still got to talk about the windshield and the back window. Now, as far as the windshield is concerned, leaks between the glass and the rubber molding will show up on the instrument panel. Sure, Joe. But remember... Leaks between the rubber molding and the body will seep through under the instrument panel. Right. And any leaks along the center strip will come out through the center garnish molding screw holes. Now, here's how you test the windshield. Check the bottom edge first by starting at the corners and working toward the center strip. Next, you check the center strip by starting at the bottom and working slowly to the top. And then you wind up by testing the top edge and sides of the windshield, right? Just about, my boy but you also shoot water across the cowl toward the lower edge of the windshield, like rain behaves when you're driving in a storm. Couldn't you stop some windshield leaks just by tightening the garnish molding screws? Sure, but if water still seeped by, you'd have to remove the chrome finish molding. Then, seal between the rubber molding and the glass and the molding in the metal using a good grade of windshield sealer. Yeah. And be sure to put some sealer at the top of the center strip before you put it back. Okay. Now how about the back window? Well, if water gets between the rubber molding and the glass, you'll see it on the package shelf. If water seeps between the molding and body metal, it may go into the trunk. As far as testing goes, check the lower edge starting at the corners, then check the sides and top edge. Sure. And you'd seal between the rubber and the glass and the rubber and the body just like on the windshield. Besides these ideas on body sealing, fellas, is there anything extra special to keep in mind? I don't know how special these are, Tony, but there are two more important points. First, use compressed air to blow out any water from seams that need sealing. Otherwise, your sealer won't stick. Next, with unleaded gasoline or naphtha, always clean any surface to be cemented or sealed. Kerosene won't do, because it leaves an oily film that only dirt will stick to. Here's something else, Tony. This reference book's got some good dope on sealing other body types. Oh, that's fine, Tech. And, Joe, you certainly know how to tackle water and dust conditions. You said it, my boy, and you will, too, if you remember these three important things. First, 
know and where the body's sealed, plus a step-by-step -step water test, is the only accurate way to find leaks. Second, be sure you use the right materials to seal the body properly. And last, always deliver a good, clean job to the owner. Boy, you can say that again. Okay, I will. Always deliver a good, clean job to the owner. Do that, and you'll be sure to keep your customers happy. Thank you.